All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be having a little bit of fun on the sim. You know, just playing some pretty random decks that uh, I've been enjoying playing, having a little bit of fun with on the sim, like I said. And uh, today's gonna be more of a lighthearted, chill video. We're gonna be going over three games on the sim: one of red, green, Luffy; one of purple, yellow, Croc; and one of purple, Luffy. Okay, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let me tell you guys what's gonna what we're gonna be doing in today's um, video. First things first, we will be heading over to the sim. We've got a game of green yellow Yamato versus purple yellow pudding. Okay, that should be a lot of fun. Then we're going to head over to the sim and we're going to go over the three games I said. Uh, in no particular order, by the way. I know you, you see it on the screen is like red, green, Luffy, purple, yellow, Croc, and then purple, Luffy. I have no idea what order it's going to be in, guys. It's going to be uh, <laughs> totally random. Okay, and then we're going to wrap up by checking out the deck list and all that good stuff. I'll, sh I'll tell you what I think about them, maybe which direction to go from there, and we'll, we'll uh, wrap up the video in that way. All right, guys, you know what you're getting into. Like I said, I'm trying to make this a, a little bit more of a condensed, shorter video because I really want to make locals tonight. You know how that goes. All right. Okay. As usual, I will have everything time stamped in the general description, and I will have any relevant links or, um, you know, deck list in the comment section below. All right, guys, you know what you get into. Let's do this. So first things first, we got a game on the lab. Okay, let me get rid of the this here. There we go. First things first, we got a game on the lab. Now, what is the VV Lab? For any new uh, viewers or new players, new watchers, whatever, um, at, the, at the beginning of each one of my videos, I try to include this portion of the video that I call the lab. It is essentially where um, viewers want, to, want me to review their gameplay. It's very easy to do if you're interested. All you have to do, um, you know, play a game and record it. Of course, that's the first step, right? Upload it to YouTube and then hop on the VV Theory Discord, and I have a channel called Review My Game. And all you have to do, click on that channel, and then put the link straight in there, and then as soon as I see it, I'll put a little thumbs up emoji next to it, and I'll just throw it in line, guys. Now, you know, the line does grow. The, the line kind of goes up and down, up and down. It's like I might get a few submissions one week and not as many the next, and so on and so forth. But um, hey, as, as soon as it's your turn in line, I'll review your video. I, I, I don't do it, you know, per uh, matchup. I just go straight down the line. First come, first serve. Okay, so you know what you get into, guys. Let's do this. Um, and if you have any comments on that, by the way, if you're like a newer player and you would like to do that, just say something in the comment section below. Like if you need to know how to get set up on the sim or any of that stuff, we'll get you set up. All right, or I'll do my best to. All right, now we can hop into this game. Um, volume is off. Speed is on 2x. The quality is up. And let's do this, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. So it looks like the uh, the pudding player chose to go first. Okay, and pudding does like going first. Okay, that is a thing. However, one thing that's nice about running Yamato into purple yellow pudding is I don't think pudding has a lot of blockers. First of all, like they probably run some might run brulee, some might run run Sanji or something like that, something along those lines, uh, or maybe even the new brulee as well, the purple brulee. There's like a yellow and a purple one now. Um, you know, as of OP08. But but here's the thing. Um, if, if uh, the Yamato starts hitting for nines and just, you know, smacking both life out of the way at a time, that could be very, very hard to deal with for this purple yellow pudding player. Okay, going to swing for five. We're going to counter out aggressively. Now, this is like, it looks like this is a Land of Wano version of um, green yellow Yamato. Like maybe, I don't know if it's necessarily a fortress version. And they did leave the, the um, we'll look at the deck list after the, vi after the video. They did leave it in the, um, at the very beginning. Okay, so here we go. They played out a blocker. That was very smart. That was very, very smart of them. But hey, okay, if that's the case, I'll just swing five, and now you don't get to use your effect to, um, you know, jump straight. Okay, let me let me pause real quick, guys. A lot, a lot is going on. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so before we even, uh, you know, talk about the Hiyori stuff going on right now, this is how purple yellow pudding works. You want to go first. And you attack on turn two, and that reveals your top two, the top two cards of your life. That ramps you a dawn, and you go to four, you know, go to four dawn. Now on turn three, you're going to six dawn, and typically what you want to do is you want to take the hit on, on the turn before that. When your opponent attacks, you take the hit and go down to three life, but you have only one card face up because you took the top life card that was that was face up as well. Then you play out the Katakuri to ramp to seven dawn and then that puts the face the, the last face up card face down again and you swing in with your um your purple yellow pudding and you go up to eight dawn 
So on the next turn, you go to 10 Dawn. While your opponent is coming off their 6 Dawn turn, you're going to 10 Dawn, dropping down a 10 Lin. Okay, so that is a massive advantage. However, it's not exactly easy to do that against Yamato. Because guess what she does? She takes two life at a time, okay? So theoretically, you could still take that hit if you want to, but then you go down to two life very dangerously on, you know, on your third turn. And, or, you know, going into your third turn, you go down to two life, and then you could do the combo where you attack with your leader, ramp a dawn, play out the Katakuri, ramp another dawn, but again, you're down to two life, and that's where it becomes very dangerous. So the pudding player chose to put out a blocker, <clears throat> excuse me, and not take any damage yet so that they could preserve some of their life. We'll see if that's the right call. Let's let's see how this uh, goes over the course of the game. Now, one more thing before we uh, before I pause it. Now the Yamato is playing out a um, Hiyori. They took a Neko Mamushi from the top, and now they're going to put another card up there. Okay, probably a Kikinojo. Uh, well, you know what? They took that hit, guys. They they did not take that hit. So it looks like instead they put up the Onami. I do like that, but I don't know if it's going to be able to get much value here. It all depends on if the purple yellow pudding respects the um, proper sequencing against your deck. Okay, so Onami unfortunately can only hit a five or less with the trigger, so you know it is what it is. But hey, at the same time, okay, yeah, maybe we just counter out of this one. Maybe hope for a better target later. Yeah, I don't think that's a, that bad of an idea. Okay, now we can swing in with Neko Mamushi here. That does make things interesting. But hey, here we go. All right, we're going to swing in for six. Let's see if they want to take it. If they take it, it would be very dangerous again. And they can no longer get to 10 Dawn next turn, like on like in a perfect curve. So, you know, we'll have to see. All right, so they use the blocker and a 1K counter, and here we go. The Pudding player is playing very defensively. I'm surprised they did not take that hit right there from Neko Mamushi to go down to three life to potentially play out a Katakuri here to get extra value and get a blocker in hand because that blocker might come in very handy here. They swing for seven into six into the Neko Mamushi 2K counter out. Okay. Yep, and, and so they were going to play the Katakuri anyway. So so uh, one thing I don't quite understand there, I'm going to pause it for a second for the Purple Yellow Pudding player. I would have taken that last hit from the Neko Mamushi to go down to three. I understand it turns on the Kikinojo. I fully understand that. However, you also get to play out blockers and things like that to, to, to move things around in that way. I'm not saying it was a play mistake. I'm just telling you what, guys, what I would have done is purple yellow pudding. Because then I would have just swung six into the Neko Mamushi. He still ends up having to give us a 2K or the 1K, the other Neko, Neko Mamushi. That's fine. And then I can play out the Katakuri plus the two cost Viola that's on top of our life. Okay, so just, again... It's not necessarily a play mistake. It's just a difference in play style. Okay. So we are on an eight dawn turn here. Going to swing for six. Going to force a 2K or two, two cards from life. And here's where that Viola would have been very nice. You see what I'm saying? Like already that Viola would have been so nice here. Going to swing for six here with Neko, with the uh, Neko Mamushi. And I think, are we just going to slam another Neko down? Okay. And we can, we can add... So I think we messed up a little bit. Hang on a second. Let me, uh, okay, let me pause. Yeah, it looks like we could have swung for eight and eight, but we messed up a little bit there because of our leader effect, right? Since we swung in for six, let me go back a little bit, guys, just to kind of show y'all. Okay, right here, we swung for six and they take it, right? So in this situation right here, I think I would actually just, you know, attach two to my Neko Mamushi, like not use the leader effect, just attach two to the Neko Mamushi then when we play out this Neko Mamushi, we can attach to with the leader's effect. So not, not a big deal, but hey, it does, you know, that kind of stuff does add up over the game. It is technically a missequencing or a misorder. But uh, the other idea is like, okay, well, I'm swinging for 10. He countered out of the last one. We got a card out of hand. Now he has to give me a blocker or another life card. So there's a way to argue uh, both ways. But I think swinging for eight twice might have gotten a, a life card and the blocker. But who knows? We'll have to see. Seven into six here. I'd probably let it go. Okay, going to counter out. That's fine. I personally would have probably let it go because that card's gotten so much value. But let's see what... Actually, I guess they are about to drop 10 Lin, right? They're, they're about to drop 10 Lin, so maybe we go for lethal this turn. I don't think we can, though. I don't think we can go for lethal this turn because the, all they need is a 1K and a 2K to get out of one. Yeah, I mean, because it, a 1K will get out of the leader attack. Well, actually, excuse me. We're about to be on 10 Dawn. Never mind. So maybe... actually, Okay, I totally take that back. 
we're about to be on 10 dawn. We're, we're not going to be... I'm, I'm so used to playing out Hody Jones on curve, which is not always the right call. Oof, okay, so they got it anyway. So they decided, you know what, now, now I'm just going to eat both your Neka Mamushis here. Yeah, and that's why we probably should have just let it go. Honestly, like, I think we might have should have just let that card go. And then, hey, if they attack into life, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Uh, but, but now, okay, nice. Okay, so we might be able to get lethal anyway here. Because we're going to be able to tap down these two blockers, swing in for double attack for eight, and then swing in for ten to, to uh, end the game. Let's see what happens, though. They might get a blocker. Who knows what they'll get. Oh, he's really considering the banish. I do not. Yeah, smart. Do not risk the banish here. Force him to have a 2k, 2k. Because, yeah, see, okay. So then it would have been absolutely horrible. Probably just going for the, yeah, nice. I was going to say just going to the 8 cost, uh, the eight, the 7k with your 8k. Nice. Swinging Hiyori into the zero cost um, uh, Shirahoshi. That was awesome. <laughs> hey, getting every piece of value that we can. Squeezing every ounce of value out of this game. Now, what do they do in this situation? If I'm if I'm the pudding player, I don't know what he just drew for his hand. Obviously, I'm going everything into yes into that character right there. Absolutely, yeah. And, and of course, that's going to get it. And they should, I would have swung for even more. That was that was dangerous. They're, they're lucky we didn't have a two K right because how much was that over? Hang on, let me see something real quick, guys. Yeah, okay, that would have taken both cards out of hand. Swing and ten was a good number. Very nice. What is this last card? They have five dawn left. What what are they about to play? Are they going to swing with um? Uh, pudding, maybe? <laughs> like, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. Yep, okay, they're going to swing with pudding. All right, very good. Play out the Hiyor, uh, the uh, the Banish. Yep, just load everything up. He, yeah, he can't get out of a 7 because he only has one card in hand, but he does have a blocker. Play out this guy, pass turn. Very nice, the Momonosuke. Unfortunately, Onami is not Landawano, right, guys? Or maybe that is fortunate. Actually, that, that would be insane at that point, right, <laughs> if it was Landawano because you'd be able to get the Banish, put in the life, get the, the get the trigger. Oh, man. Okay, so they got down a, um, a Lin Lin. We might have to go all in here. Banish. Swing nine, or a seven, excuse me, swing seven. Let's see what they get. They got rid of a big mom and a, what, was it two big moms? I couldn't really see. Um, and then it looks like we're going to, I think, I think we have to go all in here. Seven, we knew that was going to get through. Attach all. Hey, the only thing that could have saved them, let's pause. Okay, there we go. The only thing that could have saved them there was a, you're the one who should disappear, or a beige, or something like a Sanji, or something like a, um... Uh, actually, no. We we have we have a Izo in hand. Even a Sanji or a um, a Brulee would not have helped. They had to get you're the one who should disappear or um, beige. That was their only way out of it. Really good stuff there. Okay, or or technically, I think like an S Snake. If if I don't think anyone's running that though in uh, pudding just yet, but that that could have technically gotten around as well by locking down the character. If it can, I think it can target any six or less character other than Luffy from the trigger. Okay, really good stuff there. One more thing I do want to mention. Like, the only turn that I think was a little bit risky was uh, this one. I think it was this one right here. Okay, right here I was saying I think we should just let the card go. Because showing that we had to counter out with a zero cost 3k, think about what that showed. Okay? They attacked for 7. So we know there's not a, um, a 2k counter in hand. Right? Like, we, we know there's not a 2k in hand because you would have just used that. So... By countering out here, it was like, okay, so in other words, if I swing 7 and 7, I can take out both Neka Mamushis now. And that's what they end up doing. And I was saying maybe it was a good call to do that at first, but again, trying to go for lethal. But it's like at the same time, I guess it ended up not being. But maybe there was no way to save them, period. And that was really more my bigger argument, was like, I don't know if there is an actual way to save these. And then look at that. Then he plays out these cards, and we actually got down the... Um, it looked like we were going to be able to win the game right here, but they had just enough to counter out of this. Remember, they had just enough to get out of this. Uh, they had to use a zero cost 3k and a 1k to get out of this 8k attack. We were like this close to just winning right here on the spot. Potentially, you know, depending on what kind of triggers could have happened. Okay, good stuff. Other than that, though, I think that was a great game. R very educational, um, you know, uh, submission there. Really good stuff. All right, guys, give me one second to get set up. I got to black the screen out for a second. Oh, I'm going to show you the deck list. Just kidding. Going to show you the deck list, guys. Okay. One second. Let me move this off. Okay. So this, for anyone who might be interested, this is the deck list that we just saw. We did not get to see any spicy Noah's Ark pop up. That would have been incredible. 
Uh, but it, it looks like it's some type of Minx plus Wano hybrid build that they're messing with. Seems really, really interesting. Really, really cool. Okay, pause and take a screenshot of this if you want to copy it down. Again, this is not my list. This is something that someone submitted, someone from the uh, community. Okay, all right. Give me one second to get set up, guys. We're going to go straight over to the sim now and check out some other games. Let me move my face back to where it was. Okay. Almost there. Okay. There we go. All right. I, I was almost, I was just a little bit off there, wasn't I? Okay. All right. So let's make the volume go off. Let's make the speed go 2x. And we are good to go, guys. So first game up here, we got a game of Purple Luffy versus Purple Yellow Nico Robin. So this is obviously OP09 stuff here, guys. But hey, like I said, these next three games we're going to be looking at, this is meant to be more of a chill stream, right? And these are the these are the decks that I've been having a lot of fun playing lately. So I'm going to ramp a Dawn here. So they took that 5k hit, by the way, and got a Brulee Trigger. I'm going to ramp a Dawn with the Leader Effect, drawing a card from the top of my life, and then I'm going to play out a 4 call 6k body. That four cost six K Zoro is a is a menace, guys. That was my three cost card. That was a three cost six K to a top five search, right? Very very powerful. They swing in there. I do counter out because I don't want to lose any cards through banish this early. I play out the Sanji. We're going to rest down the uh, Kikinojo. We're going to swing six in the Kikinojo. They only have four cards in hand, guys. That's why I'm I'm aggressively attacking this. I don't care if they gain a life, right? It doesn't really matter. They take it, and hey, they did get a trigger from that life for what it's worth. Swinging for five here. I, again, I'm not just... He's got to swing for more than that. He's got to swing for more than a five. If, if you know, this person has to swing for more than five if they want me to give them, you know, uh, the effect of banish. But okay, we got to do a little bit of math here. We're going to swing for six here, see what they give me. They give me a blocker. I'm like, okay, well, now it's going to be seven, seven. Okay, did they take the last one? What just happened? I'm sorry, it happened a little too quickly. Yeah, they took the seven from the Zoro, and then from the Sanji, they block out. Now we're going to go ahead and play out, I think, a blocker maybe. Yeah, the uh, Sanji. I am running the, the Frankie in here. It's not great, but it's also not horrible. Okay, seven. We're going to block 2K counter. He has seven Dawn left. He plays out another another one of these Lin Lins, guys. I do not like to give my opponent life. I, I'm just not a big fan of that, if, if I can help it, especially against a deck like Nico Robin, where... Most of their cards, they're probably going to have like 50% triggers in their deck. No trigger there, though. We'll take it. We'll swing for seven. And let's see if they're ready for this Luffy. Okay, they, they were they were at least ready, at least in some way, right? So I think right here we're going to have to play out the Frankie. We're going to have to fix some cards in our hand and go about things that way. Play out the Frankie. Dawn minus two for the effect to trash a card and draw two. Okay, we, we did get um, another Frankie. Not, not exactly a great... Um, you know, card to top deck, but also not the worst. So then I play out the other Frankie without using the effect because I don't want to go under 10 Dawn next turn if I can help it. Okay, swing for eight. Looks like they're probably going to swing for eight more. We'll take it. Got a Gum Gum Giant here. Okay, I Gum Gum Giant here to go up to nine. Got a, you know, trash card, draw two from that. Then he's going to swing in with Ace, and he's going to swing into the uh, Sanji. Now I can actually probably just go for lethal right on the board if he doesn't get any crazy triggers. It gets a Nico Robin, but it turns out Sanji's just better than that card, right? Sanji's just going to, you know, or not the Nico Robin, rather. Whoop, let me pause real quick. Uh, not so much better than the Nico Robin. That card's good in all kinds of ways. And I really like uh, I really like the direction that this person is taking purple, yellow, Nico Robin, except for the ace. I, I, I don't really like that. But the seven cost Lin Lin, the six cost Nico Robins, the banish built in, like this is like... You know, this is doing some good things, right? This is really, really powerful. However, I think it probably needs a little bit more tweaking. And again, I'd have to see the deck list to, to really know what it's trying to do. But I got a really good vibe from the way they were building this. It looks really strong. Purple Luffy still very powerful, guys. Um, I think most people know that. Going into OP09, Purple Luffy and Red Purple Luffy seem like they're going to be very, very powerful. Very solid. Okay, next game, we got one against Croc. We got a purple-yellow Croc game here. Uh, this is my version, I believe, with the uh, with the Straw Hat crew. Let me see. No, I don't know what this one is. We'll have to check. We'll have to check. N maybe it is. I think this might be my purple yellow. Like um, I think I called it like Croco Mom or something like that. <laughs> I can't remember what I called it. Where it's like uh, Straw Hats and uh, and then some Croc, uh, some 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 life game, life game. Excuse me. I play out of Miss Wednesday because hey, it's just a strong card. It's gonna swing in for five. We'll give him a one K counter. 
And I'm up to seven dawn already, guys. I'm already up to seven dawn here. So we'll swing in for seven. We'll swing for nine into the um, into the Trafalgar Law. Since he wanted to use a 2k counter to, to protect it, I'd rather smash into it fully. Because when he swings in this turn, I'm going to go up to eight from the uh, character's effect right here. Boom. I'm going to return a dawn, go up to eight. And now next turn, I'm going to be on ten dawn. And I counted out for two. Okay, he plays out Hody Jones, taps down my Dawn, which doesn't matter. I couldn't save it. Swings eight into my four. We'll let that go. He did, that card, that card, Miss Wednesday, did its job for sure. Going to push back the um, the Hody Jones right back to their life. They play out a Wapo. All right. They're going to swing for seven into five. We will take that, and let's see what we do here. You know, honestly, I think playing out another Katakuri... I mean, I don't remember what I do here, but I think playing out another Katakuri and just throwing that Wapole straight back into life seems good to me. It looks like that's what we're, we're prepping for. Instead, I play out the uh, Crocodile. I actually think playing out the, the not the Nika, Robin, <laughs> the, uh, playing out the Katakuri there might have been slightly better. Maybe. Okay, well, here's another Hody Jones I can throw back to life, so that's nice. If, if needed. Okay, he taps down my characters there, and then, I, then he has to return a life card with the Hody Jones effect. He attaches to to it with his leader effect. I'm going to use my um, I'm going to use my croco uh, crocodile's um, effect here to get a dawn active with my leader effect. I'm just going to go down super low here, and it doesn't matter. It's like, dude, you're not getting out of a 19k attack. So okay, he swings nine into five. I have I have to counter out of that, right? Or actually, I might have taken it because it was my last life. And now it's like, okay, I guess I'll swing nine and then 17. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, let me pause. So the, in the situation, like, why not just play out a blocker there, right? Why not play out a blocker? Why not play out? He has two blockers in hand, by the way. Maybe he got one from his life. Who knows? Um, but I think playing out a blocker in that situation would have been much a much safer play. It might not have mattered, but I think that would have been the, the technically more sound play. Okay, we got one more game, guys. We got a game of Red Green Luffy versus Sanji. Red Sanji. And this is my film version there we go. 2x speed, volume's off, we're good. This is my primarily film version. I say primarily because notice I do have the Trafalgar Law. But this is my film version of Red Green Luffy. Okay, here we go. I'm going to counter out with the, uh, the, the other Luffy because I already have enough of those. He can't really give that character Rush this turn and swing with it because he can only get to 3k. We'll swing for five, get some cards out of hand, or, or get a card out of life. We got a card out of hand. Use the Nami to search up a 2k counter. And guys, this is the strength of Red Green Luffy. I'm not saying it's like S tier or anything like that. Please do not misunderstand me. They're going to swing in for seven. They're going to swing in for five. Improper sequencing, guys. It has to be, okay, yeah, okay. So he went like five, five. He went seven, five, five. So it's like, okay, now that I know you don't have any more big attacks coming my way, I'll just 1k, 1k out of these very easily, like very comfortably. You know what I mean? Uh, sequencing is, is everything, guys. You, you got to watch out for that. Um, but at the same time, maybe he was playing around jet pistol triggers or something. I, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. Uh, but, but anyway, and I don't even think I would swing with this Zoro unless I can attach one Dawn to them to keep them safer on, on the crackback. Now, anyway, back to what I was saying, the thing that makes red green Luffy so powerful, um, with the film version is we have two searchers. We've got, uh, film Luffy, the red, uh, Luffy card, and then we have Nami. So we have some really, really powerful searchability in this deck. And then our top end is actually also very, very good, right? Okay, so they're going to swing for five. I think we're just going to 1k counter out of this. Yeah, just maybe give more 2k. Yeah, because we are going to be drawing some cards with that Nami, right? Okay, we'll swing three into three. Let's see what he wants to give me. If he wants to counter out, that's great, because I didn't even invest a Dawn to get out of that. Okay. We'll swing five into three. He's not going to be able to uh, save that. Now we're going to swing seven into five. We'll go ahead and snag a, probably a 2k, maybe a blocker. Yeah, the small blocker, actually. That, that was a weird choice, right? I feel like, I guess because I have I have enough top end, it's like I'll just get some smaller stuff to help protect me now. Play out the back rat. He plays out kid and killer. He's going to swing for six. That's an easy 2k or a block. You know, I think, yeah, I think I should just trash Shanks here. I don't need Shanks in this game, right? Sanji's a little too aggressive. Then we're going to 2k counter out of that. And now I'm in I'm in such a strong position now. I'm going to be doing a top three search every turn with this Nami, and I can kind of protect it as well at this point because Sanji doesn't run a lot of removal, if any at all. It depends on what version of uh, Sanji you're running, of course. Play out the brook, draw some more cards. I've got a blocker. I've got two Namis. I've got six cards, five cards in hand, excuse me, and three life. I think he has to start going for life here. Yeah, go for life. 
Okay. Well, I, I know he's only going to have a 6K left because, again, because of the way he's doing the sequencing here. So I'll just counter out. That was a misclick. I, I meant to counter out with a chopper, but I hit Bluno first. I did over counter there. That was just strictly a misclick, unfortunately. Okay. So this guy's a 5K now. We're going to swing in for five and draw a card with uh, Nami getting a 2K counter. Swing for five more. Let's just grab a blocker. And man, this is just getting out of hand now, right, guys? This is just getting completely out of hand. My board is stacked. Uh, next turn, I probably could maybe go for lethal, but what's the point? I've got blockers. I've got draw card. I've got everything. I'm in full control at this point. And that's why you have to at least run some form of removal. And why didn't he... Um, hang on one second. I'm sorry, guys. Let me go back to here. Why did he swing at face? That's what's really confusing to me because I have three life. I'm just going to take that. Why wouldn't he go for my board there a little bit to try to you know prolong the game? But hey, it's all right. You know, people make bad decisions on the sim all the time. It happens. We'll swing eight and eight, try to get a card out of hand. He lets it go. I'm like, oh, okay, that's a, that was a bold decision. So he must not have any counter power at all in him. So I go five, seven, nine, uh, or five, seven, seven, and then I'll just go in for, um, you know, stand the brook up and go in for, for nine. We kind of mathed him out there because he didn't, okay, because he did not save, you have to look for these little cues, guys, when you're playing. So right here. Wapole is a massive character. It's an 8K character that you need to try to protect, right? 8K when you use his effect, obviously. So watch this. When I swing 8 into him for free with no Dawn invested and he does not counter out, it makes me think he has no counter. Then I swing 5 into him. He doesn't counter out again. It's like, uh, okay, well now let's swing 7. And now let's swing 7 more and, and basically force him to win the game next turn or else put him, you know, or, or have lethal. And we actually had lethal. He only had a 1K and a... He, he must have got the the uh, Beppo from his last life card. Look at that. He got a 1K, a 1K, and then a 2K. It happens. Sometimes you kind of break out. Countering out aggressively with, with uh, Sanji is probably not a great idea either. Um, let me go back a little bit. I feel like he tried to save his cards. Like, I think he tried to save Luffy one time. Let's go back. Right here, yeah, it was this. It was this next turn right here. Okay, I swing three into the three K Luffy, and he actually gives me a two K counter to save. It's like, it's like, hey man, um, I have two five Ks coming at this at this three K now, and now I'm gonna swing seven. Like you just lose your old board like that. I think the best way to play Sanji, and I'm still messing with it as well. I'm actually messing with a film version of Sanji. I I've showed it before. For those who are interested, I'll I'll link in the comment section below if you're actually interested. But I've played a, a version of Sanji that's very film-oriented with basically all the red cards we're seeing in this red-green um, Luffy uh, film Luffy deck. But I think you actually have to still play very, very precisely or, or you just run out of gas. You run out of gas and you run out of fuel so quickly. Okay, all right, well, that's it, guys, for the decks. Uh, today was a pretty short video. Again, like I said, it's about 30 minutes. We are at least going to go over them real quick, the different deck lists that I used. Uh, first one up here, we're going to go in order that we played them. So purple, uh, then purple, yellow, then red, green. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so first up, we, we do have this leader. Uh, this is a straw hat version that I'm running here, and it just has a little bit of extra top end. But see, this can't be it. Because... No, no, I think this was it. Excuse me, I think this was it. I'm sorry. I, I saw the Charlotte Lynn Lynn, but maybe I was playing this. I don't know, guys. Whatever I was playing that we saw today, it is very, very close to what we're seeing on the screen right here. Um, this Zoro here is very solid in the deck. Uh, I'm a big fan of this Zoro in Purple Luffy, whereas in Black Purple Luffy, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of the other Zoro. Let me bring that up real quick. The one coming out in OP09, this one. Pause and read this if you don't know what it does. But this card is just so perfect in that version of, of uh, uh, Purple Black Luffy. Whereas with Purple Luffy, this card's not bad. I I, I am running it in this list because it is search, it's a searchable one K counter early drop for um, for um, you know for Luffy. But here's the thing: the reason I'm running this in OP09 as opposed to like in OP08, I don't think I'm even running this card in my Purple Luffy list. But here's the thing: in OP09, guess what this card's really good against? You know, maybe a deck that doesn't let you use on play effects. That's right, Blackbeard. So, so against Blackbeard, this is actually a really incredible turn one play, or uh, turn two play, rather, whether you're going first or second. And also, if you're going against a more aggressive list that's trying to, like, burn you down really fast where you need all your life, playing him out on turn two without having to lose a life card, you know, going first, taking first away from your opponent, it's actually a very, very, very solid choice in that, in that, um, in that regard. 
Okay, but, but typically speaking, what you're trying to do with the list is whether you go second or first or second, you, you usually want to play out Zoro Juro. Where it's, well, I guess they're both called that, aren't they? But anyway, you know, the, the four cost one. Uh, now, this is from ST18. We don't have this card yet, but the idea is you want to play this out on turn two, whether you go first or second. And I prefer to choose to go first so that I can play this out on turn two with a, as a four cost 6K. It's like a three cost 6K that lets me do a top five search. Uh, so it's just very, very powerful in that way. And then if we have to, we go right into our seven dawn turn, right? If we have to, because we'll go from four dawn to six on the next turn. And we went first, right? Use our leader effect again to go to seven. And then we can plop down Sanji if, if we need to. It, you know, that's it's an option if we have to do it. But yeah, and then from there we get to the nine dawn stuff, you know, with the uh, the Luffy and the uh, Lin Lin. So really cool stuff. This this list has been feeling pretty good. Um, I think this gin base is pretty solid as well because we are ramping to 10 pretty quickly. Um, it, it might also... How do I say this? I'm not a huge fan of the 10 cost gear 5 Luffy in this deck. I'd rather sit on 10 Dawn and just start looping these 9 cost cards like Luffy and uh, Lin Lin. And I, I was experimenting. It's probably going to be 4 of this Luffy and only 2 Lin Lin. Or who knows? Maybe I'll do 4 of this Luffy and 3 Lin Lin. We'll have to mess around with the numbers later. And y'all tell me what y'all think in the comments section below. But I'd like to get to 10 Dawn and then sit on a card like Jinbei where he is a 5 cost 7k blocker that I can cheat out with Luffy Taro. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for this list. You know, not too much going on here. You know, I'll have this all linked in the comment section below if you want to like uh, plug the list in and look at every single card individually if you don't know what they do. But pause and read this one if you don't know what Gum Gum Giant does. This is a massive card that's going to shake up the meta in OP09. I don't know if it'll technically shake up the meta, so to speak, but, but at the same time, it's going to be a card you see in any purple deck going forward, prob probably, more than likely. We'll have to see. This one, maybe not as much, but it's a Dawn minus two to rest a five or less, then draw a card two cost dawn minus two rest a five or less and then we can start smashing through and it does have a trigger to um ramp a dawn as active i believe it's kind of cut off but i think it ramps a dawn as active okay next up purple yellow uh croc again i think i called this deck croco mommy 85 yeah yeah this is it this is it um really cool stuff here this is a leader where i want to go first every game and I want to play out on turn two, Zoro or Miss Wednesday. Miss Wednesday is actually preferable because she is a blocker and she ramps so efficiently. Because um, it's like guaranteed, right? Whereas like Zoro, you have to attack. And typically if you have to attack, they're going to try, first of all, they're going to try to remove either of these characters. Let me just say that right away. But as soon as you attack with Zoro, they're probably going to KO it. Now that's good. We're still going to get our Dawn from him. That is the most important factor. But at the same time, it's hard to protect him. Miss Wednesday is like, I'm not going to attack at all. So if you don't have removal, I'm just going to get Dawn back all, all day, every day. Just get Dawn back like crazy, uh, which is really solid for what we're trying to do. This is just an OP08.5 list, like with the new starter decks. So there are no OP09 cards in here yet. It, so it does still have room for improvement going into OP09. And I'm only running two, I'm only running two Okama Way or Okama Way. This card's so good, it probably needs to go up to a 4 of. I just haven't really messed with it. But but overall, it, it is not searchable in what we're doing here with Zoro Juro. Because um, that's kind of the theme of this deck. Is like, Purple Straw Hat Crew is so strong now, you can combo it with pretty much any leader that's, you know, that's applicable, you know, in, in any way. You know, any, any leader that's purple, pretty much, can just use this package now. Just like in blue, you have Seven Warlords of the Sea. Well, now in purple, you have Straw Hat Crew, where you can kind of push it around and do whatever you want with this, this um, you know, this type of, uh, like, foundation. So, really, really powerful there. Again, I will have this in the comments section below if you want to try this out and if you want to analyze it a little more thoroughly. Okay, last but not least, we got the Red Green Luffy deck. I think I just called this Red Green Luffy film or something. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Red Green Luffy. Is it Z or is it Z9? I feel like it's going to be one of these. It's usually my most recent version. Let me try Z9. Yeah, Z9 probably has an OP09. I think that's what it was. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like 90% sure this is the list we were just looking at. But I feel like I had more than two Trafalgar Laws. So, I don't know. Let, let me try Z real quick. Let me try Red Green Film, uh, Red Green Luffy Film Z. No, it's, de it's definitely not that one because that had even less. Oh, well, I'm going to put on the Z9 one that we, that we just had it on. 
Um, long story short, this is basically what I was running. There might be a few cards that need to move around here and there, but this was pretty much what I was running. And guys, this, this list feels pretty strong. Like, just randomly, I think this is a strong list. I'm not saying it's S tier. Like, I, I, I always have to stress that, guys. I play... I play a lot of off-meta decks, and whenever I'm saying they're strong, I'm not saying you're going to go win the next tournament with it. I'm not, you know, I have to always make sure I'm very clear up front about that. I'm just saying it's a pretty solid deck that you can have a lot of fun with locally. And this list right here, guys, it's running the Dual Searchers. It's got some shenanigans you can do with Trafalgar Law. It, it's, it's got a lot of stuff it can do. And it's running a few Supernova uh, cards in here. Not many, only um, six. I think it's only running six Supernova cards. Uh, this one's technically Supernova. But you can't stand this one up with the leader effect. Because uh, it has to be a uh, cost 5 or less character. So, yeah, I think it's mainly running 3 relevant super uh, Supernova targets that you can combo with the Luffy. But it, but it still has the Straw Hat stuff you can you can pull up as well, like Nami. Nami, Brooke is what I, I used to win that one game with. And hey, even this Luffy right here, if you needed to, you know, if, if uh, push comes to shove, right, you can even use this one. Uh, this Sanji could be pretty spicy as well because he gets pretty big. Because I guess there's like a... There's potentially a combo where it's like, okay, swing for five with your leader, right? Whatever. But then, okay, so we only need four Dawn for this effect. You could load up six Dawn on Sanji. Like, theoretically, right? Theoretically, load six Dawn on Sanji. Swing for 11 plus two more. So 13, right? And then pay four to stand him up with this effect here. So now he's a 14, and then um, swing again, right? Seems good. So swing for 13, swing 14 with this guy. Again, it's like it's it's an option that you can do in the deck. Will it ever come up? Maybe once in 100 games. I don't, I don't know. At the end of the day, though, it's a 2K counter, and he's a 4-cost 5K body. And because he has a 4-cost 5K body, you technically can cheat. And he's Straw Hat Crew, of course. And, he, and he's Film, actually. He's Film and Straw Hat Crew. So you can technically cheat him out with Luffy. Right, nothing too crazy, but it is a fun little trick you might be able to pull off every now and then. Right, let me see something. Dawn times one for every three rested Dawn on the field, this character gains plus 1,000. So again, if you loaded six Dawn on this guy, he would go straight to 11 plus two from the effect. So 11 plus two is 13, and then stand him up to swing again, 14. Yeah, so that, that would be crazy, guys. And then who knows if you had a Cavendish to, to lump, uh, lump in there as well somehow. Who knows what you could do. <laughs> Just swing for the craziest numbers you could imagine. Uh, but then again, if you have a Cavendish on the board, that's probably the character you want to use with the Luffy's effect, right? So it's like, you know, swing with him. Un, un, you know, set two Dawn is active. That's not a once per turn. So then use the the, uh, the leader effect to stand him up because he's Supernova. You can stand him up because he can be any Supernova or Straw Hat character, guys. That costs five or less. So really, anyway, let's, I don't want to harp on that for too long. That's it. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I will link these all in the comment section below for those who are interested in trying them out. This list is a lot of fun. Purple Luffy is as well, and so is Purple Yellow Croc. But there's something about this list. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I might have, if this, if this list got a little bit more support, I, I don't even know what it would be. I feel like this could be something very special. But who knows? Maybe the leader effect just costs a little bit too much where, where it's just kind of hindered in that way. We'll have to see what happens in the future. All right. All right, guys, I'm done. Hope y'all enjoyed. Let me uh, go ahead and put up the uh, play map page here. Big shout out to everyone. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta update this uh, play map page, don't I? Hang on one second, guys. This. Okay, we got one more person on here. Um, let me, if I hit browse, let me see if it, no, I'm not gonna mess with that yet. I'll, I'll uh, put that up on another time. But I've got, we've got one more person to add to the list. Uh, Michael, who's not on here. Big shout out to Michael. Thank you to everybody who uh, supports me by buying these play mats. I hope you're enjoying those. I hope you're really, um, you know, having a lot of fun with those. Okay, and then last but not least, of course, the BB Pirates patron page. Thank you to everybody on here. We've got another name added to this list. Thank you guys so much. Let me move my head down so you can see these names fully. There we go. Uh, more and more people supporting the channel. Thank you guys so much. It really helps me keep the dream going, keep the dream alive. And uh, hopefully soon I can just quit the, uh, quit the other job, you know, with the teaching stuff, the substituting this year so I can just become full-time content creation. At this rate, it does look like it'll happen at some point, but when, who knows? We'll have to be patient and find out. Ho hopefully sooner rather than later, right? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, hey, if you're just liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting, viewing, viewing, anything like that, you're helping me out big time. Please continue to do so, and I really do appreciate it. And all right, that's it. Please do not forget to like and subscribe on this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time, guys, peace.